Okay, great. Happy Sunday, everyone. So today is a lovely Sunday. As we've been talking about, this is the time now after the movable feasts, everything is, you know, easy now, not quite. And that's kind of what I'm talking about this Sunday at Mass at, in the homily. But there are several other things that are worth talking about too. And so thank you for joining for coffee. Here we are still. This is the, the fun part of the day, really, because we're doing the deep cuts, the cool things. Anyway, as we always do, let's begin with our prayer. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ, thy Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good times, happy times. We're now in that nice, easy part of the year. I can't stop saying it enough because it's a joy. It's a treat. <laughs> anyway, let's dig in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, Most High, to proclaim your kindness at dawn and your faithfulness throughout the night. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. The just one shall flourish like the palm tree, like a cedar of Lebanon shall he grow. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. They shall bear fruit even in old age. Vigorous and sturdy shall they be, declaring how just is the Lord, my rock in whom there is no wrong. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. 
for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The seed is the word of God. Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, this is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow, he knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, to what shall we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, that when it is sown in the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth, but once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the features of this time of year is that we are no longer in the time when, is there a sequence? <laughs> are, are there these other interesting things that are going to happen in the course of the liturgy? It's nice. It's great. And so <clears throat> this weekend in church, I'm making this connection where it's a very, very simple thing. We're now in this time where we hear parables. For the next many weeks, we're going to hear these parables and then lots of miracles. That's all it is. We're no longer doing the mysteries of the life of Christ and other such things like that. You know, these very important things which are dear and near to our faith. Rather, we're in ordinary time. So what the word means, by the way, just like note to self, ordinary has to do with things coming in order. The Sundays come one after the other. So it's like the word ordinal as opposed to cardinal numbers. Ordinal numbers, first, second, third, cardinal numbers, one, two, three, they mean different things. Okay, sorry, I was nerding out there for a second. But the whole point of it being very, very simply, when the Lord is expressing things to us in parables, it's really kind of, it's a, it's a matter of love. It's, it's a matter of being intimate in just the same way as many of the things that we do to show our love for others are very small and sweet and kind. They're not grand gestures. Parables are not grand gestures. And, you know, to the same point, I would also say that the miracles aren't either. And I say this because the miracles are always very contained where, you know, next week we'll hear about some time being on a boat and the boat being stilled or the waves being stilled, you know, that's that story. And um, like the biggest one that we'll get to in about, you know, seven weeks or so, uh, we'll have the story again of the multiplication of the loaves, that, but it's, it's a contained thing. It's not like they were dying of hunger at the moment. It was a matter of convenience, if anything. It, taking it on the on the superficial level, you know, it's it's a, it's a small thing. It's important sometimes to the people who receive it. Like for example, the various healings that we will otherwise hear about. It's tremendous to the person who receives it. To those who see it, it's pretty cool. But other than, but the 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 scope of it is is rather contained. And so the, this whole season is kind of marked by this. They're rather small gestures, especially considering that, you know, the Lord is God and, you know, the creator of the world and things like that. So these do become very small gestures by comparison. Anyway, what I wanted to mention today on coffee, though, is a little bit different. So first of all, 
Today is uh, St. Anthony of Padua Day, which is always worth mentioning because St. Anthony is the one to um, <laughs> everyone prays to to find the lost things. This is this is that St. Anthony. So uh, there are a couple of St. Anthony's. There, there's St. Anthony, the ancient one of the desert, many wonderful stories, fascinating guy. But this one today is St. Anthony of Padua. So um, called of Padua, but actually he was Portuguese, but it doesn't matter. And it's, it's all okay. The, the point of it being he moved around a bit and he's a Franciscan, very famously, the most famous of the, not St. Francis himself, but early Franciscans. There are other famous Franciscans, but no one is more famous or important than St. Anthony. St. Anthony, aside from being the one that we pray to when we lose our car keys, is the one who also famously, rather likely all the, the other St. Anthony too, talked to animals. So well, all those like St. Francis of Assisi stories of preaching to animals, they're, they're really not St. Francis, it's actually St. Anthony stories. So St. Anthony is the one who preaches to fish, for example. Anyway, but really what that's supposed to be is a reminder of how good his preaching was. He was a very fine preacher. Anyway, I wanted to mention that real fast, just put that out there for fun. By the way, his prayer, you know, I'm not gonna say it later, we're not gonna pray it later, we're not gonna pray it this year because we're skipping St. Anthony Day because it's a Sunday, but you know, just for fun, let's we'll pray to St. Anthony for a second. Almighty and ever living God, who gave St. Anthony of Padua to your people as an outstanding preacher and an intercessor in their need. Grant that with his assistance, as we follow the teachings of the Christian life, we may know your help in every trial through Christ our Lord and so on. So St. Anthony, great guy, wonderful help. Then um, the other thing that I wanted to mention today has a lot to do with, let's come back to the gospel for a second and what it is that we're talking about in these things. So when the Lord speaks in parables, I already mentioned that what I'm talking about this Sunday is it's a way of showing intimacy and love and kindness. But there's another part here, which is when he is teaching this way, yes, there are a variety of kind of connotations of the simplicity of the teaching, of the acuteness of the teaching, of the precision of the teaching. And one of the ways in which to understand this, and I, I know that people kind of hate it when I say this, but it's um, a lot like what happens in the Eastern philosophies of when there's a riddle to be riddled. It's, it's something that requires a little bit of going into. So today we have two little tiny parables. The kingdom of heaven is like. First, we have a, a, you know, a grass or wheat or something, something that grows very, very quietly. And then in the end, it is also harvested. Obviously, it's not just a single blade. So going back to the text of the gospel, it, it, it makes this thing about the kind of the, the one thing, because then it says first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wheels the sickle at once for the harvest has come. It's not just one plant, it's many. So, and of course, the gospel also says that he goes to scatter seed at the whole beginning of this. So it's lots, it's a field. It's uh, something that's not so bounded as to be just one, but the effect is tremendous. Speaking directly about this in terms of what this means for the kingdom of heaven, there are lots of ways in which we can understand this and interpret this. And part of the thing about these parables is that they're meant to be not univocal not just one understanding, but meant to be open to several different understandings. What I get out of it is what I get out of it, as opposed to what you get out of it. We can all, we can all get something out of it, hopefully, and that's also part of it. If anything, um, that's kind of the point. You're supposed to chew on it for a while and, and, and enjoy it, really. But what I get out of it is simply that the effect of the kingdom is a much bigger thing than you can easily think of. It's not just one moment, but rather many. 
and this is what I mean by the field. It's a, it's a larger thing. It's, it's bigger than you think it is, even if the effects are very small. And so that's also the other part of it, that it's very small kinds of movements or gestures or things that you can't even necessarily see have the kind of the effect or the return on investment to use a different term or otherwise the um, the accomplishment that you is is measurable it's very very small and incremental which i think is a very comforting thought because that means that the heroics that are going on in the kingdom of heaven ultimately it's not the grass growing the, the kingdom of heaven has a lot more to do with God than it does with the individual pieces moving. All of it according to just one thing, though. That's another part of it, that there's a, an organizing factor here, which is, of course, the will of God. Anyway, so we can go on and on about these things. Second, of course, the, the mustard seed, which is, like in both of these cases, you know, from an from a objective point of view, um, both of these cases that are mentioned, the smallest seed, the largest plant. Well, no. Um, in, in both of these things, in kind of an objective way, no. It is not the smallest seed, and it is not the largest plant. So what, what, what is that about, first of all? Well, in, in the one hand, yes, it is kind of a, a literary device, so it's not meant to be a scientific statement, but rather a, an illustrative one, first of all. So, you know, not getting too caught up in the details there. But then the other part of this um, is the, the rather, I think, interesting part. It's a mustard plant. So there's another part here, which is not just about the birds going in and hanging out on the branches or something, but also the flavor of it, that it has a very intense kind of effect and maybe the best way to understand that really is even though the seed is very very small it's deceptive because it's so flavorful I, okay this is you know again this is a my interpretation and today and not another time at this moment likewise you know chew on it well don't chew on too many mustard seeds because it'll be bad but still the point being this, that they have uh, more significance than is merely just on the superficial level. So when it comes down to it, the mustard tree is a very familiar parable to us because it's again about the same thing, that from the very small comes the very great. And it's not necessarily in a way that you see the difference because it takes time. And in those moments of time that we are looking, nothing is happening. In the time when we are not looking, a lot has happened and what is really going on with that? The whole point being that ultimately, rather like how St. Paul says it, Paul spread the seed, Apollo watered, but God gave the increase. It's a rather famous quote. Um, the, the idea here is very simply this, it is God who mo moves these things forward. Okay, what are these things now? Okay, so we understand the parables in a variety of different ways, and we can apply them in a variety of different ways too. Even though they say the kingdom of heaven is like, kingdom of heaven is like, they also can be easily applied to a bunch of things. One of them, and I think this is, again, a consoling thought and my interpretation today for fun, has a lot to do with ourselves and how we grow. The, the growth that we experience is one that the Lord is directing. Now, we also have a lot of choice in this. We have a lot to work on ourselves and a lot of ways in which we move the direction in the way that we desire. But especially in following those things which are of the Lord and observing them and going through them, it's God who gives the increase in grace. The kingdom of heaven is like this, grace increasing. So what do we know about the kingdom of heaven from these things? The kingdom of heaven grows, obviously. The kingdom of heaven grows in ways 
that are not necessarily the result of the one who is working it. Shall we say us? The kingdom of heaven grows in a small way, but in a full way. Again, it kind of really applies to us ourselves. And this is a very useful thing too. So there's, there's always a tension between doing the hard work and the easy work. Ultimately, in the kingdom of heaven, it is God who does the real work, even if we are working hard or easy. So with that being said, there's a very worthwhile point always to be made about how even though it is good to observe that which is of the moral law or the rest of it, and you know, maybe like the liturgical life of the church and all the feasts and all the other many things that we do, when it comes down to it, it's a very simple kind of action that's required, which is the disposition of the heart. So even if there is a great number of works in there, it's all about what is in the heart, first of all, that faith, because that's where the increase happens in the hidden place. And whether it be of this grand field or this one bush, the mustard tree, it's still like the kingdom of heaven. Now, when there's lots of stuff going on, let's say lots of working at it, lots of being very persnickety about it, or otherwise um, being, you know, overly concerned about the details. It's kind of like the other farmer who, instead of letting the thing grow, is always working at it and kind of disrupts the growth. We also know that phenomenon too, both in the garden and also, I think, in our lives. There's a lot to be said here about abandonment to the will of God. Now, all of these things being said, <clears throat> there's a point here that we have to talk about prayer. Here's what I mean. When we are <laughs> kind of overactive in trying to search for exactly the effects that we want and have what we want as being the primary thing and not necessarily working within the will of God, then we have an issue especially when we pray for the effects that we want, the very precise effects that we want to happen. Call it change, call it what you will, but often when we pray to God, it becomes a matter of requesting some kind of fix it right now thing. This is not how we pray. So the kingdom of heaven is like, Again, these two examples. The way in which we pray has to also be cognizant of this paradigm. That first of all, our Lord is the one who directs everything. And there is a natural way in which it happens. In fact, the natural way in which it happens is defined by God, who is the creator. So all of these effects are going to happen. And there's the part here, which is, again, that abandonment to the will of God, which is to let them happen. Now, there's a danger here, which is, well, if that's the case, then why bother praying? And otherwise, why bother paying attention and all of those other things? So remember a couple of weeks ago here on Coffee, we were talking about the book of Tobit. Remember that, that, that reading during the week that I mentioned, you know, we don't read this nearly enough. <laughs> Note to self, these are really good things. And remember what the kinds of prayers were of the people who were praying from their desperation were prayers of praise. To pray to God is a marvelous thing. It is something that really does incorporate the intellect, the physical, the emotional, the whole person in what is the direction of prayer to God. And it's not about asking or complaining or otherwise being annoying. If, if our prayer is an action that we would find annoying if someone were talking to us that way, it's probably a good moment to realize that we're not you know, necessarily annoying God because God is beyond that, but we are probably praying in a way that is not necessarily the best. The understanding of prayer then has a lot to do with this 
being within the will of God. Hence, um, things like the Our Father, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, or the Angelus that we pray every day of Mary, be it done unto me according to thy will, or otherwise the entirety of Christian prayer, which is, Lord, in your will, grant that these things we ask for, but your will first. For example, the Lord in the garden. Take this cup away from me, but not my will, but yours. These all have a couple things in common. There's a request, there is, but it's not made as a demand. It's not made as it has to happen or else. It's not an ultimatum, hardly. But more importantly, it is an acknowledgement of God in his greatness. It is an act of thanksgiving. And yes, also a supplication and ask. So prayer always has this kind of format of prayer, of praise, of thanksgiving, of supplication in that order. And also in that order of importance and time spent on each point. This is something which is worthwhile to think of. Now let's come back to the parable. The kingdom of heaven is like. Our prayer is very much like the seed. Our faith is very much like the seed. The word of God is clearly also the seed because that's also mentioned elsewhere. Again, these things are not univocal. There are lots, lots of different ways of understanding it. But each of those prayers that we offer, though, are very much like that. When we put ourselves in that position of being attentive to the Lord in prayer, we don't know what the grace will be. And as we open ourselves up to grace, that gets broader. All right, so the nature of prayer is something we can always talk about and always we need to talk about it some more. And especially in a time when we ask for things, it's always important to remember this. Ultimately, it is the will of God. The point of prayer doesn't have this, like, therefore, well, since we're working on the will of God, then why does it matter what we pray? Well, it does, because we're aligning ourselves to God in a very human way, to God who is divine. And what we have been learning, what we always celebrate throughout these many mysteries from Christmas to Easter and beyond, is about this thing of joining the human and the divine together. This is part of that Christian life. Anyway, that's what I wanted to reflect on with you today on coffee about these parables. In church, I'm talking about something else. As we always do, let's bring together our prayers now and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Bishop Oscar, and for all bishops, that in their challenging moments, they may find strength in the Holy Spirit and comfort from the flock they shepherd. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Catholic Church, that it be the bastion of hope for this world and the beacon for all souls seeking truth and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's people throughout the world, that any divisions existing between us disappear as we move closer to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, that as we celebrate the sacred heart of Jesus this month, for our own hearts become inflamed with love of him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithfully departed, that they receive the, re the reward to look upon the face of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Hansons ask us to pray for continued blessings as their newborn continues to work toward coming home from the end ICU. And also in thanksgiving for our amazing parish and the support that they have received. May you and yours all be blessed and protect, protected. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And the Mayorleys ask for the conversion of their family and friends outside of the faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them on the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant all that works for our good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on us, remain with us forever. Amen. It's amazing to see the Hansons with us this morning on the Zoom call. They've had a very complicated couple days, but thanks be to God, their son is born and doing very well. And we are certainly praying for you a lot. All right, let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of St. Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and Church, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Great, fun times. Everyone, tomorrow being Monday, we have the seminarians who will give the reflection. Tomorrow is Brian's turn. So come and join and enjoy. Everyone, God bless and have a lovely rest of the weekend and stay cool if you can. All right. See ya. Bye-bye.